Hey Skyfarers and welcome to Avercast, the Caravan Overlords podcast. I'm Lee, Arkham Apple, and here with me today, as always, we have our uh, resident hobby hobo. Hi guys. And our uh, resident uh, Lord Magnate, uh, the, high, the highest of the admirals, we have Alexander Cron. Hey. And... Um, Today we're going to talk about starting your Caledonian Overlords army. Um, how to get started, some tips on what to buy, what, how to build things, painting and playing and plan, plan your army. Um, but before we do, uh, let's have a catch up. So what have you guys been up to? Alex. <laughs> uh, well, hobby-wise... <laughs> Not as much as I should be doing. Um, we're stuck inside. Uh, this is the best time for a, for a hobby, but yeah, it's mm. it's a lot of procrastinating going on right now. <laughs> okay, so you've been procrastinating, <laughs> and I assume you haven't been playing any games because you... um, mm. I we I have figured out how to do tabletop simulator. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, Jump so I've been on playing. You. Yeah. No, I care. Uh, I've been playing some games with some of the, the local guys. Um, we're just figuring it out at the moment. We found a good, a really good base for AOS, and you just kind of poured in your army, which is like 2D models on bases. And But it, mm. it all works out pretty well, as long as you don't accidentally throw pyramids on the table and scatter everything. But, you know, <laughs> who would do something like that? That'd be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not me. That's for sure. Okay. So, is that quite complicated to set up or not? Um, not really. Uh, all, all the the AOS additions seem to be free, and you, you just kind of like subscribe to them on the Steam Workshop, and then just you you load in this fantastic um starting board. I'll see if I can find the name of it for people. Mm. Uh. Um, yeah, and um, but yeah, it, it's I th it's Dynock, um, Age of Sigma Dynock, um, and it it's, gives you like the, the board. It gives you all the missions to flip through, a whole bunch of terrain to add in. Um, uh, all the endless spell models already there, and the rules for them. Yeah, it it it, it was really simple once I once you download that thing. Okay. I sort of fell at the, the first hurdle of that because. Um... I use my work PC for the stream, but the like small little laptop we have is about uh, like ten years old. Yeah. And I looked at the system requirements; it hasn't got enough RAM, and I don't think I can install oh. it on my work PC. I can get away with the stream because it's just like a web app. But yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, installing stuff on the work PC, I think it's probably going to be a no-no. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've, I've been playing a bit of uh, tabletop simulator and. Mm. Um, I painted up a couple models, uh, Night Vexilla, basically. <laughs> okay, cool. How about you, Hayden? Put my cards on Overlords. Cool. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, I'm working on this guy. Coordinator. Coordinator. Yeah. yeah oh, so you two are basically doing the same thing, almost. <laughs> no, well... <laughs> I'm going to do Vexilla, Vexilla as well. Are you going to do a Vexel Law as well? You should. Fuck no. No. No, no, no. You're doing an ordinator. I'm only paying this because I've got no KO left and I've had okay. a grind for fucking years and just okay. not touched it. So, yeah. So I'm painting this guy up at the moment. So um, you completely run out of KO. Pardon me? You completely run out of KO to paint. Yeah, I, I literally ran out in like the first three days of the lockdown. Yeah, okay. Because, no, this is how you're supposed to do things. Yeah. You need to buy, you need no, to buy I'm, more. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a speed painter, so yeah. like I had the shit, and I was like, oh, yes, we don't want to take me a while. No, nah, like three days, done. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting to have both the money and for lockdown to come down so I can get more. 
Um, but um, a quick shout out though, um, in regards to TDS, um, there's AOS coach. He's got um, his wee Discord, and the guys will jump on there. They'll play, and you can actually live stream the games on the Discord. There's a wee community of dudes doing it. It's actually quite cool. Oh yeah. Yep. So um, I'll see if Magro can chuck you the link to the Discord, so you can jump. All on. right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll try and rally the um, rally our group behind it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I'll get Anthony to post it for me. There's a fair few people in there. There's good chats, good little... It's in the sections as well, for anyone that's sort of not used to Discord. It's like, there's like a hobby showcase section, like a list tech section, like a general chat section. So, you know, if you're only interested in one thing, you can just go straight to that section and see what people are talking about. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, for me... Uh, I guess I've just been working on some thunderers. Um, I haven't done a huge amount because I am still working, unfortunately, from home. It's the work PC. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Just working on five thunderers at the moment. Um, I might even get them finished today. I don't know. I've got furniture to paint as well, unfortunately. Garden furniture doesn't really count as painting, but it is. Um, I'm looking at lists and things. But, yeah, that's it, really. So, mm. uh, should we talk about our main subject? Let's try sure. Into it. Sure, yeah. Yep. So, um, we're going to talk about starting your KO army. Uh, give you some tips and tricks and advice on how to avoid pitfalls and stuff that we or we know other KO players have sort of fallen in the past. Um Roughly, we're just going to sort of go through um, sort of planning, uh, purchasing, production, and, and playing in a loose structure. But uh, we were talking about it before, and I don't know, it's kind of a, a circular sort of thing. And when you're talking about one subject matter, like the other three subject matters sort of feed into it to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, so we might meander a bit. But we'll we try, we we'll try not to too much. Um, yeah, you come, you come to this podcast. You know what you're in for. You know what yeah. we're about. We don't <laughs> stay on topic. If they get a half segment in the middle of something very random, I'm sure. Hmm. <laughs> um, so before we really dive in, how, have either of you two got any hot tips straight away, like quick things? Uh. Facebook is a good place to buy. Read the description real carefully. <laughs> um, don't trust them as far as you can throw them. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> if something's not in the picture, don't assume that they have it. Yeah. Um, Big thing is bases. A lot of time they won't include bases. Other times mm-hmm. they won't include heads. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not bitter. <laughs> um, yeah, is that... Um... Or even better, if you can afford it, just support your local. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, support your local gaming store. I mean, I try and support um, the guy down in Carpet mm. I was talking about last episode. I try and support mm. him because he does real good work. But, um, yeah. Um, so, first things first that I would definitely do, and this goes for starting any army, is figure out your budget. I mean, obviously, if mm. you're on a budget, then you have to, you know, prioritize. Um, but if not, and if it's all good, um, buy the book first. Always yeah. buy the book first, um, especially if you're interested in getting into the game competitively or even not. You know, it's always good just to have that book there so you can make a list um, because that's leading on to my next point. You need to have your book to make, make, make your list. So definitely get the book first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'm going to have to drop out for just five minutes, but I'll be back. Yeah. God damn it! <laughs> what is this? Now it's just me and him. Yeah. You'll you'll, you'll survive. You and your I believe in you. I believe in you. I can't just leave it. (laughs) Just cut your video off or something. There we go. Bye. There we go. All right. Um, We'll carry on. He'll be back soon. He's just got to eat pizza. (laughs) 
Um, I, I my think hot... he has. I think he's going to get pizza. Yeah, he says he's going to get pizza. Um, my hot tip is get the get the war band, the Shades Bar war band, Thunderbirds Profiteers. Mm. Um, yep. I don't think you can get wrong getting that because you'll probably want a chemist at some point. And it's yeah. cheaper. It's cheaper than buying a chemist. At least it is in the UK. Um, yeah, it is cheaper. It's a chemist is seventeen pounds now. I might actually get up to GW site to see how much things are because they have changed the prices on something. Um, but it's either seventeen pounds or seventeen fifty for a normal chemist, and the Shades Bar wall band is fifteen pounds. So it's cheaper, and you get a few extra models. Um, the one thing you're going to have is when you first start is you don't necessarily know how you're going to want to paint things. So you, yeah. you can use those models for test schemes um, to try some things out um, mm. if you're not sure how you want to paint stuff. Um, and then you've got your chemist sitting there. And I think it's really handy to have that extra uh, thunder of a rifle as well because that gives yeah. you a little bit of freedom of how you... Um, how you build out your funders about you know magnetizing and um, yeah 1750 in the uk for chemists so you stay cheap by 15 you get extra models um yeah no true yeah very very true um it's, it's the same situation here and that's actually what i did for this second or third iteration of my ko army that's exactly <laughs> what i got um, i did the shades fire warband um just to figure out my paint scheme i changed mm -hmm. it actually and now i'm just thinking i might go back and fix it so thanks for saying mm. that been up there so i did yeah and i use that chemist for my games too so. yeah um oh someone jack a who he says uh, it's the same price in australia but i mean if it's the same price you still get more models so yeah still a good deal. um yeah i mean the, the one thing is if you do try out paint schemes on him on on those and then you want to use them and they're in the wrong paint scheme you have got to repaint them but yeah at least you haven't then got one random model in a unit that's different. Yeah, true. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there is that. So, yeah, I mean, the first thing we want to do is, if, if we're going to sort of move on from our sort of hot takes and onto the main subject matter, is you need to plan your army, which you kind of hinted at before with your budget and getting the book. So, yeah, obviously getting the book is very important. Planning your army is one of these things that's a little bit circular yep. because you can quite easily come up with an idea for an army and then you'll play it and then decide you don't like it. Um, and, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, and then you might have to go back to the drawing board, which is one of those unfortunate processes. And I guess that's kind of partly why people are going to be here watching this to try and find out what we think um to think and that's why people net listen things um is to get an idea of what works um i don't think it matters a huge amount with ko with the new book no i Just... think i think um there's a bit of a, a like a fat middle of, of what's good and what's bad like yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say everything's equally well balanced and perfect because um, obviously the heroes is where it starts getting a bit skew iffy because yeah. they're not really there to deal damage anyway. So, no, they're not. And, or, and some of them are like mostly good in combat and some are mostly good in shooting or, or, mm. or neither because their abilities are so good. Um, but from a unit perspective and ships as well most things are relatively equally balanced um or at least to the extent that you're not going to be massively hampering yourself if you choose one thing over another um yeah i agree agree with that definitely yeah yeah no i do <laughs> yeah. that was good i was going to think of something to say but i'm like no i agree yeah. with most of that yeah. i think the only other exception is maybe sky wardens but then because yeah, they're no, in the same kit, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm Skywardens. For buying them. Mm. But, um, Skywardens and the Engine Master on foot are probably the only two models off. And maybe the Admiral, depending on what, what, what you're doing, is um, probably the 
avoidable. I mean, like they're always good to pick up later on, just in case you do really want to, you know, yeah. grab branch out and try something new. But yeah. at the moment, Sky Wardens just don't do the business. You know, no. we've already covered on that before, but yeah, they're just not. In my opinion, they're not worth it right now. They could be in the future. You yeah. don't know. So yeah. Um, but the thing is, if you buy the kit, this same kit that makes wings, yeah. so you just build them. Yeah, exactly. That's, right. um, yeah. that's the main thing. Um, Entrance masters. Yeah, I kind of agree. I have seen a lot of people are using them. Hmm. I've because, seen a few. Yeah. Uh, because they're cheap. I mean, most of the heroes are about the same price anyway. But if you're like, because they support the ships, you know that they're always going to be doing something relatively useful. Yep. Um, and they're not, they're not bad in combat, really. Just moving them around. No. Yeah, they're right. Um, but I think the main thing is when you're planning your army, um, you can, if, you, if there's one particular unit that you think looks really cool, uh, like one particular ship, or say say if you really like Thunderers or you really like uh, Engine Riggers, something, then you can build around it. Um, mm. that's, that's the key thing. Is don't think there's not like one build and you have to spam that one key unit. Um, yeah, no, like we, we don't have any problem. Yeah, uh, which is really good. Um, unfortunately, it does mean that if you then later want to try out new things, you'll end up buying more and more models. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the trip they want us in, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, they, but, they want us to keep buying the ship, which yeah. is a fair business. Thing. But um, mm. yeah. So, so yeah, so definitely plan out what you're going to get and what are some of those things that you would recommend that young people get or new people get. Oh, well, I would definitely get a ship. Um, yep. At least one. Um, I think to have a semi-competitive list. Um, and that's the other thing you need to do is work out what your goals are with your list. Because if you if you're not bothered about being competitive, then you really can yeah. just buy whatever you want. To show. Yeah, um, I assume if you're listening to this, you want to at least even if you don't want to be competitive, you want to not you know be completely turned over in the games. So you want to have some sort of um, you want to have yeah, a fighting yeah. chance. But I think if that is the case, you need at least one ship because fly high is so powerful. Um, yeah, it is. I guess we should probably explain what things are a bit because this is a starting care episode, so we should um, <laughs> explain. So, fly high basically is an ability that all of the ships have that basically lets you take the ship off the board and put it somewhere else on the board, nine inches away from enemy models. Um, so, basically, it's a teleport. And it, yes. teleports are always really powerful in this game. When you combine yeah. it with shooting, it's even more powerful. Because yeah, definitely. the problem with teleporting is that nine inch charge. Yeah. So instead, what we have the problem with is nine inch range. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. You, you need at least one ship. Um, ideally, more than one, because you know, if not, if someone takes out that threat, then you're just relying on foot movement and it's. That flies, um, which okay, unless they're riggers, which is 12 inch movement, which is still really good, um, but it's not as good, it's not as threatening as teleporting. Um, yeah, no. So, if you start out with a ship, you need to then work out how what else is going to go with the ship because, it, especially if you only have one, you need to kind of cap, capitalize on that movement. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have a frigate or an ironclad, you want some troops to go in it. Um, so, Archonauts are a little bit of an issue because they have nine inch range pistols. And so, if you teleport to more than nine inches away, so it, which would be at least 9.01 inches or whatever you want to call it, you, you're not going to be able to shoot. Um, yep. At least not with 80% of their guns, 70% of their guns, um, depending on how you mm. build them. Um, so that's a little bit of an issue. Um, Thunderers can go in the ships, um, but they're a little bit expensive points-wise. Um, yeah, that's kind of. 
Yeah, I find, I think if you 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 either build a funders list or you or you don't. You, I don't think you can sort of go like I think the fact as soon as you put them in because you want them in tens probably to get your egg yeah, goal. Definitely. At least um, two. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's two hundred forty points, which is a fairly sizable chunk um, of your army. Mm -hmm. It's not massive, oh, and Alex is back. Um, I'm back. Yes. Hey, Mo's back. Did you get your fucking pizza? Yep. But very quick. It's good. Can't it's got... <laughs> nah. Where's my got it. pizza? It's got egg on it. It's great. Egg? It's good pizza. Yeah, it's Aussie pizza. Oh, okay. <laughs> not saying anything. About really that, good. I'm not saying anything about egg on pizza because we'll end up talking about pineapple and all sorts of things, <laughs> and it will just it will be a 30 minute. So what pineapple? I'm not saying anything. I just I just know it's divisive. Um, uh, so you know, while you've been gone, we've been talking about planning your army. Um, so really, we haven't said a, a great deal other than you need at least one ship. And if it's a frigate or ironclad, you need some troops to go in it. Yeah, wow. Uh, uh, ships are really why you will buy this army, right? Yeah. You've got to think about what, what you want, why, why you want this army in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, and for most thing, people, that's a ship. Yeah. Um, the other thing we said was um, that basically I explained about how most units are fairly balanced other than heroes, so you can kind of buy to an extent what you like the look of, what you think is cool. There's not like that one unit that's really efficient and you have to spam it. Yeah. Yeah, there's they're all about the same power level. Yeah. Um with roughly, of, according with the exception to point. Of hero, yeah, with the exception of heroes, because they're they're kind of doing things that aren't doing damage a lot of the time. Heroes there are some clear winners and losers. Yeah. Mm. But <laughs> um so planning your army, yeah. So um mostly what what you want to buy and um uh, yeah so we you, you probably want to decide whether you want to go down like um whether you want a particular theme towards your army because i think some people might say want to build like a completely flying army mm, um yeah others might really like the look of archonauts and thunderers and want to go oh, i want to have a lot of troops um and you could build a, a completely ship-based army. Like cause it, I said, a flying army before, but that couldn't include... Um, you could do it, it with could um, frigates, ironclads, uh, and uh, small elite units inside those, or you could do it using balloon boys, uh, mm. end riggers, sky wardens, and just to have mm. an army on flying bases. Yeah. Led by mm. Brock Gongson. Yeah. Or the engine master. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I. But either way, I think you're. Even if you have a troop-based army, you probably want some ships, because if not, you're sacrificing that teleport. I don't think you can build a gun line, really. No, you can't. We just don't have the range for it. Um, you know, we just simply don't have the actual range to. Do it to do it effectively, um, and to do what a gun line is meant and to do, which is to cause mass damage from, from afar. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, no, nah, there's just no yeah. well, there is like, um, there's certain particular units, but those units are expensive. So, the Thunderers would be your main choice for a gun line army if you were to do one, nah, it is. but yeah, 100 points for five, and you're gonna have to take Barrack and Nah if you want to make the battle line as well. Otherwise, you're going to be spending on Archonauts, which only have a mm -hmm. nine inch range on your main pistols, which is where most of the damage and sh yeah. sh shooting up come from. So, but now, yeah, so back to the flying thing. Um, if um, because there was a question um, on our Facebook page um, about doing an entirely flying army, so um, but I mean, you can do it, I wouldn't recommend it, um, due to the lack of board presence and whatnot, but. In the end, it, it's your hobby, man. You do it. Um, but yeah, as you're saying, you 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 could do it under Barrack Zilfin, where you can have frigates as battle line, 
You could join yeah. the Urbez, which is what I would do, um, mm-hmm. because you can make Gun Haulers Battle Line, which frees up mm-hmm. points for more other shit. So, but yeah, you, mm-hmm. you can do it. It is legally being able to done, and that's what I think they intended for that in the book. Mm-hmm. I think if I was going to do a, a completely flying army, I would yeah. go for an engine master as general. Um, I was literally just thinking that, yeah. Yeah. Um, Not an admiral? He does a lot because, with ships. No, because what no, I do because... is then I would say, like, as a completely flying army, and I'd use a lot of riggers rather than, yeah. rather than say, a complete ship army. Because obviously the riggers yeah, fly. Um, because, I mean, obviously, like, so what Hayden just said was basically if you want to do an all ship army, but I think what I'd do if I want to do an all flying army, I would, I would still have ships, but I would go a lot heavier on. On engine riggers and use yeah, have right. them as battle line. Um, I might do it. I think it's certainly viable. I think the issue is is how you screen. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I mean, you'd end up with a very small elite army where every unit is pivotal and mm-hmm. like has needs to be kept safe. Yeah. Every single yeah. unit. Which means uh, you'll yep. be extremely vulnerable to counterattacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, you'll hit really hard, but you won't be able to take that hit. Um, mm-hmm. And you're probably going to lose the objective game. I mean, you might get one turn out of objectives, what with, what with flying high in the movement. But after that, you're just going to get launched mm-hmm. after that. Yeah. The, the advantage of end would be at least when you fly high, their bodies on the objective as opposed yep. to troops inside the ship, which can't get out. Uh, the difficulty with, if you want a complete flying army, would be heroes, because you've only then got a choice of two. One of them yep. can't get have a command trait or artifact. Um, so then that's only really a choice of one, which is, he is a good hero. Um, whether you want more than one of him, I don't know. I mean, there's a couple... He's expensive. Um, I quite like him, and there's uh, you can combo a couple of good things with him. Like, Phosphorite Bombments is really good. Um, oh, yeah. And, say, if you were Barak Zilfin, um, Grudge Bearer and the, the Staff of Ocular Optimization are a good little combo, um, which is, to explain what that is... For chemist, yeah. Yeah, we need to remember to explain things, because um, this is, like, we said, said before you uh, come back, Alex, that this is obviously meant to be a show for people that are starting an army. So yep. they might not have read the book. Um, so Frostrite Bomblets, <laughs> what, basically what it does is in once per game in your shooting phase, you pick um, uh, one enemy unit within six inches and you roll a dice. On a two plus, they take a mortal wound. And then you roll again and you keep rolling until you get a one. So potentially you could do a lot of mortal wounds. It's a really yeah. good artifact. Um, Staff of Ocular Optimization is uh, an artifact where you get plus one to hit on one gun. Um, the Flying Engine Master has a gun that does six attacks. That has an 18-inch range, so plus one to hit on six mm-hmm. attacks is quite good, as opposed to you know like a gun that only has two attacks. And Grudge yeah. Bearer, you pick one enemy hero... Uh, before the game starts, and that hero gets uh, plus one damage or double damage? Plus one damage, isn't it? Um, uh, for Grudge Bearer, uh, I believe it is Pretty double sure. damage. Yeah, it's double damage. And that's my favorite yeah. combo. Yeah. Is Grudge Bearer on the Injured Master? Um, yeah. And Turns- False Right yeah. Bombers. Well, you don't get double damage on the phosphorite bomblets. No, because those are... Uh, that would be awesome! <laughs> that would be just so stupid. Yeah. That'd be so great. stupid. Be yeah. That'd be so, um, so, yeah, you could you could maybe build a list with, with two of those, two flying engine masters, uh, one with Grudge Bearer and um, the staff, and then one with phosphorite bomblets, and then a couple of ships and just loads of riggers. Uh, if you want to, so if you want to do a themed force, you can. Um, I think realistically, 
you're better building a more balanced force where you have a kind of a mixture of troops and um and flying units uh mm. for instance yep. to look at an extreme you'd go to say like gary percival's list that he used in heat one which was he still had obviously foot heroes and he still had one unit of archonauts mostly for the battalion but you also need that just for a screen yeah um but other than that that is an almost flying army um and then this the same way we said you couldn't really have a gun line i guess if you um i'm trying to think i don't i'm not sure if i can see an example that's very um troop heavy can you think yep. of any examples where someone's a very troop heavy army um, um the list the to an one. event hey uh to an event mm. not people not really people generally don't to events um well let me mention actually because sean tubman's winning list um event winning list um it was a mornar list and it actually has quite a lot of bodies and i've been using it mm. because i play, play i used to play with him every week pretty much because he's an yeah. asshole yeah. Um, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, and it's actually quite body heavy. So there's at least forty archonauts in the list. Okay. Um, nine engine riggers and one big unit. Uh, yeah. Ten thunderers, a gun hauler, an ironclad. And yep. um, what else? Um, no engine ma master with dirigible suit. Uh, two mm -hmm. navigators and a chemist. Yep. And, um, actually works really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, we made the mistake of saying that more now. Oh, sorry. The, was it us? I don't even remember so long ago now. But, you know, making the mistake that a lot of people didn't think that more now was great. And I even saw today mm -hmm. on the Facebook page that someone said it was unplayable. <laughs> so, no, it's not. It's actually really effective. Uh, but we can go into that on a later date. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, um, but another gun, because his philosophy is that Running KO in the traditional sense of what people have been taking to events means that you simply don't have the board presence. And because mm -hmm. board presence is so important right now in Age Sigma, at least in our meta it is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about it was, but um, yeah, you mean you just have to have that board presence. Um, the ether chemist is out there with the big block of 20 Arcanauts, so you can give them re rolling ones to wound. And, you know, and they get it's a run and shoot in the first turn. So that means that you can move everything up and pop, pop off. You usually give your opponent the first turn so that he gets closer to you so that you can get in the range and start smashing and take objectives and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, essentially it's there for the chaff screens, the board presence. Uh, the nine-engine riggers are there just to get in there and fucking smash face while this guy's running around with ten th under his as a gunboat, just mincing shit up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the navigators are there, and they're double nerfing or double shotting like let's say a stone horn with is it Griff in a charm the one that may axe and fly yeah doing that kind of shit yeah. you're half moving half mo moving that so you're yeah. so you're taking key flying pieces out of the game essentially and just cleaning up everything else but that's yeah but you yeah. can actually do a gun liney mid to heavy body list at yeah. least by carrier standards yeah i guess a good, and, a good and example of, of a troop heavy list, but yeah, it kind of it still has how many ships do you say it has? An ironclad and a gun hauler? Two. Yeah, Two. just an ironclad and a gun hauler. So the gun hauler is there just to zip around, put pressure on the back line or on the flanks, mm. taking a random objective. It's pretty like the whole point of it, at least from what I've gathered, is that you're hitting multiple points at once, mm -hmm. right? So you've got your engine riggers on one side, you've got your ironclad on the other side, and you're pretty much just pushing putting pressure on both sides of the opponent and he's having to split or he's ha having to divide his attention to other shit while you're running up there taking objectives mm -hmm. with flying high or by the Arcanauts or by your gun hauler zipping around the place. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it, it still does rely on having some ships because that's yeah, oh, it's so powerful then, yeah. But it's, it's a good yeah. example of using troops. Having having some, some boots on the ground, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly that. You need to have, have, have it in the way the game's currently played. Yeah. I mean, I, I usually take 20 to 30 Archonauts um, 
yeah. uh, in my list. Just just to be in the backfield and hold objectives. Don't fight. Just sit back, mm -hmm. hold objectives while my boats go up and do everything and kill stuff. Uh, uh, so let's just ask his list. So we're talking about uh, Sean Tubman's list. Um, yep. The New Zealand that, champion. That's on ARS Coach, isn't it? On... No, on ARS Shorts, um, he did an article. It's on there, isn't it? It's on that spreadsheet. Sean's list. Yeah, um, yep. yep. So it's on AOS Shorts. Um, if you also want to hear a more in-depth tactic about the list, you can jump mm -hmm. onto the Notorious podcast. He's one of the the, 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 the presenters. He's AOS Tubbs on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and he talks about how to use it and how he used it. Um, yep. If you guys like, I can post the list up on the Facebook page after this. Um, but it's really interesting and it's really good and it's something that we haven't really seen in the way that people have made lists and he's definitely on to something in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I've lost my brush. But right. just generally from a, a planning point of view, if, if you if you want to get some ideas for lists, because we, we haven't got time today to just talk completely about lists, unfortunately, because we've got um, and we all do other shows about, about lists and we've done shows in the past about this, but go to AOS Shorts, um, and there's a tab for lists. And if you go on Cavalon Overlords, he's got a spreadsheet where he's got uh, seven lists, I think there is on there. So, some of that. Sean, Sean Tubman's list is on there. Uh, I mentioned Gary Percival's Heat One list earlier. That's on there. Um, there's two lists from Cron, um, which, if you listen to the show, you've probably heard about those lists before. Um, yeah, but if you're interested in I don't shut up. If, if, you're, if you're interested in those, you can go back to some of our other shows and, and hear about them. Um, um, yeah. yeah, and there's a couple of other good lists as well. There's one with six boats. So if you want to build a ship heavy lift list, that's maybe a, something to, for you to look at. Um, you could build a list that is, you know, 100% ships if you, almost if you wanted to. Uh, I think you'd probably be better off having some bodies to some extent. So. Um, but he does have some bodies in that six ship list. Um, yep. I'll just get it up. I don't want to talk about it. Let's see what's going on. I'm sure he's got some bodies in it. Uh, oh, I hate the way websites are different different on mobile to they are on, uh, um, what do you call it? Desktop. Yeah. Where are lists? Oh. We'll post a um a link up to them. Yeah. Uh, so I know where it is when I look on the on it. Uh, oh, list archive. Here we go. Oh, another thing as well is that um if you could also find at some stage um on the Honest Wargamer site they've got a whole bunch of list diaries and stuff like that yeah. sean actually did did one for his list um, oh, okay. so if you don't want to listen to him yarn about it because sean talks <laughs> a lot of shit hi sean um then you can just read what he has to say he has a list up on it um yeah that'll be good yeah um he he'll the it's basically the the creator of the list going through the list pit by bit and explaining all his design decisions while creating the thing. Yeah, it really is. It's great. Um, I it, haven't read it because I can't read. So I can't read. It, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a great resource for when you're, if you're trying to plan an army. Yeah, yeah it definitely is. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so should we start talking about like, so you got a kind of an idea of what you want for your cows and overlords. What should you go and buy specifically yeah. to make ah, your army? Yes. The fun part. Um, Down yeah, so, to the brass tacks. Yeah, so talk about this. Um, obviously, you want to buy, if you plan a list, you want to buy what's in the list. <laughs> don't just go, don't you know, if you want, if you just because it's something's a good deal on Facebook, if you plan the list and it doesn't have half the stuff you want in your list, then it's not necessarily a good deal. Um, so, especially if you are working on a budget, you know, try to stick to the things that 
you plan for. Um, that should, you know, I like to think that's fairly obvious, but I don't know. I mean, if sometimes you see a good deal and you get blinded by it. Um, so yep. if you're building a ship-based list um, or a heavy flyers list and you see someone selling an army that's mostly like, 120 Arkhorts or something, um, you know, maybe don't go and buy that on Facebook or eBay. Definitely um, not. Don't do it. Um, Check it, check it first. Yeah. Make make sure it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to purchasing your army, this does feed into planning a little bit because if you are working on a budget, you probably need to be aware of how much things cost. Um, when you but don't. So if you're on a very tight budget, don't plan an army that's very expensive. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, Cowden Overlords are one of the more expensive armies. Um, They're cheaper than what they used to be. Mm-hmm. They are much cheaper than, than what they used to be. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's never happening again. But some Ever have, again. Some things have gone up in price uh, since they first came out, at least in the UK. Hmm. Um, not here. Not for Age of Sigma. Not, not by a huge amount. Um, the star collecting um, box says the star collecting yes. box is now a very good option pretty much everything Definitely. in that box can be in su- one circumstance or another battle line and then you've got your hero um, so the, you, you, you get five thunderers which can be battle line if you're in barrack now you get a uh, gun hauler which can be ba- battle line if you're in barrack Urbaz. Uh, Urbaz, and it has Endon Riggers, uh, well, Endon Riggers, um, Sky Wardens, who can be battle line if you have a Endon Master individual suit, who's only available in um, uh, Ether the Ether War at the moment. But yeah. that, that'll change. Uh, yeah. So, most things, are, like most of the ships are relative to set the same price. Um, Arknauts work out quite expensive in terms of buying them because you can't get yeah. them in a set. Um, um, yes, you can't get them in a start collecting or something. Um, so if you are on a tight budget, don't build a list of hundreds of Arknauts. <laughs> um, don't do it. Because it, yeah, it's going to cost you a lot of money in the long run. Um, you should only need 20 to 30 of them. Yeah. Realistically, in a list, to 40. I would say twenty to forty to be safe, but twenty yeah. to start off with definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, things that are yeah. cheap is the, the start collecting is great value. Um, great value. Really, is. You, you mentioned the A four. The A four set is extremely good value as well. Um, if you can find someone to split the thing with, well, if you're it, doing it by yourself, well. Yeah, you, you hold, got a whole, but you, you got to decide whether you want. Like, it, it comes with all this Zen stuff. You might want the Zen stuff, mm-hmm. but you might not. Yeah, well, to give you an, an idea, um, and these are UK prices, but for ten for ten points, um, a frigate or gun hauler costs you costs two pounds for ten points. Um, whereas the A for War set, if you split it, is just under a pound. For ten points, um, and if you don't split it, and you're paying for the whole set, it's still one pound ninety two for ten points. So it still works out cheaper, in theory, per ten points than buying a gun hauler on its own. But of course, obviously, you're getting the hero and the uh, riggers. Um, yeah. So if you only want to buy a gun hauler, then don't buy a massive set to get it. But if you want the, the thing with the start collecting and A4 is decide whether you want all of those things because as soon as you don't want all of them, it becomes worse value. Um, yeah. And the more things you don't want, the worse in value it gets. Definitely. Um, so with, for, for someone who doesn't have any card and overlords, um, you will want most of the things in the start collecting box. You might not 
find much use for the hero. It's a cool model. But, yeah, it, it, it's a cool model. Um, it is a cool model. Uh, um, so it comes with the Ender Master on foot, who is very different to the Ender Master in the ritual suit. He won't unlock your um, Balloon Boys as Battle Line, and he doesn't have mm -hmm. access to the really potent uh, artifacts that the Dirigible Suit Ender Master has. He's more yeah. of a sit in one spot, beat stick with his hammer kind of guy. If you want to know what it looks like, there it is. That's an Ender, Ma Ender Master on foot. Thirty yeah. camera, thirty camera. Yeah, yes, yes. Here's a big camera. Um. And yeah, the the star star collection said it'll it'll give you it'll give you a boat, which is always nice. It'll give you like show you how like let you build a boat and like have crew and little extra bits that you can put on. It's it's just a fun kit, the the gun hauler. And then yeah. you'll it'll if you like the gun hauler. You'll love all the other bigger boats, which just have more crew and more extra bits and more like rigging and such. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the other thing is, if you've never, uh, like, if, you know, if you're new to KO, um, which you probably are if you're, if you're watching this, is building and painting a boat is a fairly big undertaking. Yeah. Um, not so so. If you get a gun hauler first, it's a really good way of sort of practicing that to an extent because it's a little. It's bit a good cool. intro boat. Yeah, and then you can move on from there uh, onto a bigger boat. So start uh, start collecting all the April set is is good from that perspective as well. Um, some people like to get two to three start collecting boxes. I what do you think, Alex? I'm not so sure about getting multiples. I got two. Um, I, I I got a couple and then um, got one uh, one one at an event later as well. Uh, basically, uh, this what once you get more into in in depth into the army, you'll find that the starting start collecting box actually has the perfect models for creating a one of the battalions in the book, which is basically yeah. a. Um, uh, a, a small army within itself that'll you can kind of just plug in units into this battalion and you'll have a a pretty good functioning army. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called yep. the Grunstock uh, Escort Wing, and it's got yeah. it's Thank basically you. thunderers, ender riggers, gun haulers, and then a frigate or an ironclad, mm -hmm. which like ninety percent of that is in the start collecting. Um, I guess the the biggest problem with it is is you end up doubling up on an Ender Master. Um, I do have kind of, yeah. a lot of those. Yeah, he, so he kind of ends up free anyway in it. Um, so it's not too bad. And I guess you could convert him into a different hero if you wanted to. Um, yeah, you could. Yeah, if, so yeah, if you're that way inclined, you can. I, I would personally say if you can get someone to split April War with you, then one start collecting a one April War would be really good. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, April War, I don't, it's hard to say. I'm, I'm not sure if, if it's still available everywhere. So, like, the thing is, things aren't good value if you're buying it from someone that's jacked up the price because it's not available anymore. So, Beware of, of scalpers. Yeah. Online. Um, I'll have a check on the GW website. Yeah. See well, if it's it still everything's there. Te everything's temporary, temporarily unavailable at the moment. So, yep. um, yeah, so it's not on there in the UK. Uh, the April War isn't. Um, is it doesn't look like it's on the Games Workshop website anymore. Yeah. Um, Which is... You might be able to get it from, um, you know, like, independent retailers um, because they tend, really t tend to sell out things uh, slower in Games Workshop because they're less known. A lo a lo a 
you, uh, your local hobby shops should still have Eighth of War. Um, somewhere, yeah. Yeah. somewhere in 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 their basement. Uh, basically, it's 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 a big combined box set. Uh, it gives you some Zine stuff, and it gives you six Caldron Balloon Boys, the Ender Master on in on individual um suit, suit, which is only available in this box set at this point at the point of recording, um, and one gun hauler. So it doesn't give you the thunders that the star collecting box does, but it does give you more of that, that more combat units essentially. Mm. Gives you gives yeah. you more riggers and it gives you a hero you can't get anywhere else. Um, a lot of people bought this box specifically for that hero because he is that good for this army. Okay. He is fan um, bloody testic. So I mean the thing with uh April War and the Star Collecting set does it comes back to planning. If you're planning um, something that has a list that has funders in it, then it's and gun haulers and some engine riggers, then it's a very good start. A for war is a very good start if you want something that's got sky riggers in it and that hero and and a gun hauler. Um, both of them, to be honest, if you don't like gun haulers, they're not that great value. I don't think. Really? I mean, what is it? 60 pounds? So the heroes... You got 25, 25, 50... Yeah, I mean, if you want the hero... If the start playing set, if you don't want the gun hauler and you want the hero, the sky rigger to find it's still good value. If yeah. you want the, but then, obviously, if you only want one of the hero, then you're paying... And you don't want the, the gun hauler, then you're paying basically 60 pounds for 55 pounds worth of models. Yeah. You get some other stuff cheap, but if you don't want them, it doesn't really matter, does it? So it does. Yeah, it does come back to to, to what you're planning. Um, what we didn't mention when we talked about planning was battalions. So yeah. Con mentioned a good thing, which is the start collecting set is very good if you want to build an escort wing, uh, which yeah. I 100 agree with that. If you want to build an escort wing, then yeah, that start start collecting set is great. Um, the yeah, if you, the other battalions, you, there isn't really necessarily a cheap way of building around them necessarily. There's like not a cheap way. way. So the two other battalions you have, which are basically an auto build army, um, mm. you got your uh, Iron Iron Sky Command Squadron, which is an ironclad, the big boat with Four, uh, three heroes, a squad of Ar Arconauts, and some Mendel Riggers. Um, there's not no real set that has those elements in it, but it is a, a battalion a lot of people choose to run. Uh, the other one is your Iron Sky Attack Squadron, which is two two frigates with each frigate having a squad of, Ar of, of Arconauts in it, and then you can have more frigates. Yeah, two to, four, two to five. Five is the cap. I think you're never going to get near five, really, realistically. Yeah. Um, but you need at least two, and you need the same number of Arcanaut units as you do Prius, Um which is a little bit different to how it used to be. Um, so for that, you only have to buy a buy a frigate, buy an Arc, buy Arcanauts, buy a frigate, Arcanauts, frigate, Arcanauts. Yeah. yeah. Um, a for War, I think, is you might want to pick up one A for War set. If you're building the Iron Sky Command, um, because you might, I think a lot of people end up going engine rigger heavy with that with that battalion because you have one to three uh, one to three units of engine riggers. So getting two in that, particularly if you're splitting it, like they're twenty five pounds for a set anyway, and if you manage to split it, you pay fifty five pounds for all of those models. Um, for and you know for fifty pounds round fifty pounds worth of and of sky riggers, and um, the hero can be included in the battalion. Um, so he would be one of your heroes in the battalion, and the gun hauler would wouldn't isn't in the battalion, but would work well alongside it. But again, it yeah. comes to whether you can get it and if you can split it, um, and I wouldn't buy multiples 
of Aether of War. Of Aether War? No. No, you, you no, really only need one. It would bother a bit. Um, so, if you're not buying the start collecting or Aether War and you just general tips on buying, I would say you can have a look on Facebook and eBay to see if you can get things cheap, but be careful. Um, as we said before, there are a lot of people splitting up Aether War and selling things separately. So you can get some bargains that way. Um, particularly riggers, I think, because a lot of people that had the army before already had lots of riggers. Yep. So they wouldn't necessarily need them. Um, so it's a good way of getting cheap ones of them. Um, you... I would personally go for try and get bits in your inbox. One you... one way to if if you want to if you're looking at getting a, into KO, you, you don't want to put too much towards buying KO right now. You, you if, whether you don't want to or you can't. Uh, either way, a good way to to start out the army and get a feel for them is by buying them as a kind of uh, in the context of Warcry, mm -hmm. which is like an Age yep. of Sigma skirmish mode. Um. Mm -hmm. So in Warcry, the models you can use are Arcanauts, uh, Balloon Boys, uh, Sky, Sky Wardens, and Endlingers, and Thunderers. So to, if you wanted a, like a bare, bare bone starting out KO, you could get a box of Arcanauts, box of Thunderers, box of Endlingers. That will give you a good overview of the di what, what the different models look like, and then you can play them in a Warcry game, play a, play a Warcry campaign. Um, and that, that'll give you a really budget character and overlord army. Yeah. Then to port it into Age of Sigma, all you really need is one of the four heroes. Uh, Navigator, <laughs> Endermaster, Master, Chemist, Admiral. Yeah. I'd suggest the Navigator or Chemist first. Because they're generally seen as the more useful, better heroes yeah. for the army. Yeah. I, I would never buy an Endrum Master on foot separately. Because even if you're not initially going to buy a start collecting set, you might choose to at some point. <laughs> um, and then you'll end up with two. Um, so you're a bit, uh, or if you are going to buy one, I would definitely not buy it fr from retail. Because there will be people that have bought two or three start collecting sets. I'm just trying to sell off their uh, extra engine master, so you can yeah. probably get it cheap somewhere. Yeah. Um, I mentioned earlier about uh, the Shade Spar Warband is a great way of getting a chemist and some extra models. Um, so I think that's a, if you want a chemist, it's a great great way of getting one. Um, other than that, you. Um, yeah, you need to basically try and stick to the models that you need, really. Um, one thing we didn't talk about in planning much was time scales. Um, and so when you're planning your army, you probably want to think about when you want it for. Um, yeah. And so, say, if you've got a tournament in two months' time, you want to build an army that you can get ready for that time. Um, because it's no good getting a really good deal and building a, the perfect list if, to be honest, you can't build it and get it painted in time. Yeah, um, definitely. So I think, I, yeah, that's where I think bundles can be quite good. If, if you are working for a, a strict time scale, because there are only five models for quite a large amount of points in your army, uh, an elite army will end up being quicker to paint up and build. Um, the other thing is, if you if you know you're going to be going into Caldon Overlords for the long haul, and eventually you're going to want to um, pretty much have one of everything or some of everything and try out different lists. If, if you have got, you know, like a tournament in a short amount of time, you can kind of almost in some ways disregard some of the things we said about only buying the things you need for your list. Because if you yeah. know eventually you're going to try and try out different things or 
uh, build different lists, then it, you might as well get those other units cheap in, say, the start collecting set, even if that's not yeah. what, even even though you're not going to do that initially, initially, if you're gonna if you're gonna be in in this for the long haul, and you're gonna want to play this army for several years, then yeah. and try out different iterations of it, then you might as well get get the good deals. Um, there's something else I was going to mention, but it's now sit in my head. Yeah, gone. Completely. Completely gone. <laughs> uh, so, is there anything else that we've missed on what to buy? I'm just um, going to look at the big ships. Wh- so, I went to buy the big ships, I guess. Yeah. Um... um so what I would do is obviously as because this obviously goes back to planning with your list. So you really need to prioritize. Um, now the ironclad is the largest and the most expensive ship, and it is quite a challenge for a new hobbyist. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're more experienced with, with the hobby, you should be all right. Um, but apart from that, it is just it's the centerpiece of the army. You know, it's the biggest model. It's the coolest looking. I mean, I had mine out just then, so I fucking love it. Um, yeah, so I would say if you want to start playing competitively, get an ironclad. If you want to just sort of learn the mechanics of garrisoning um, and flying high, then a frigate. But then again, the frigate might not always be in the game. So, yeah, but timing, um, it's kind of hard with ships. But definitely a gun hauler first up should be your first one because one that get, gets you in there and it teaches you some basic mechanics. And then from there... Um, either an ironclad or a frigate or both. Yeah. I, I just remember the other thing I wanted to mention, which was, um, like, Cron mentioned um, Warcry is a great way to sort of learn some mechanics and start out and get some games going early. Yep. The other thing yep. you can mm-hmm. do is you can play 1,000-point games. Um, yes. And I, when I first started, I went to. I was quite lucky because a local game store did quite a few doubles tournaments, which obviously the two one thousand point armies, and they did um, a couple of like one thousand points or one day social events, uh, which yep. is quite good because you can build a one k army, what and use that to work towards getting towards a two k army. Um, just bear in mind that if you are going to do that and you want it to be playable at 1k or or 2k then you the battalions that you're working towards might, probably won't fit in 1k yeah. um and something like mm. a fit is going to be more playable at 1000 points than an ironclad yeah different so yeah, so if you want to build an army that can work at more than one points level like that, then a frigate is probably a little bit more useful than an ironclad. True, yeah, uh, nah, yeah. Got you there. Don't let us dissuade you from trying to go on an ironclad at a thousand points though. That's gonna be yeah. amazing. Yes. <laughs> That'll be a great game. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it, it's certainly not gonna be bad. Um however, it's just it's just gonna be a little bit inflexible in what you can include alongside it. Yeah, uh, it's yeah it's by no by, by no means a bad purchase. And the other thing I would say is you will never regret having an ironclad ever, mm-hmm. even if it just sits on the shelf as long as it's built and painted. It will look amazing on the shelf. So yeah, um, so there's you, the first problem. You've got to build it and you've got to paint it. Yes, it does take a lot. I had great fun painting my ironclad. Yeah. It was great. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. it is. I it is really fun. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, should we start talking about like the hobby aspect of starting yeah. KO? What you expect? Yeah. Build and paint. Uh, My just, favorite bit. Very quickly, a here in the chat says you, another way of starting is just by allying allying in one to two units. If you've got like a stormcast army or a cities of sigma army, then a good way. Or a help yep. or a chaos yeah. army if you got health cannons. Yeah. Oh, I think he means more anything's like, possible. Put some KO into your army, the, the army you already have, and that's a good way of yeah. learning some of the mechanics because you fly high is a very unique mechanic, and garrisoning is 
So yeah, that's a very good point. Um, and so yeah, if you're going to do that, then you'll probably want probably mostly the, sh- the ships. I would have thought, or hmm? if you're putting them into a stormcast army or cities of sigma, I mean, you're probably going to be looking more at ships or yeah. sky riggers, maybe. Yeah, probably uh, gun haulers. Gun haulers is maybe turned around and Gun haulers make very good allies, very consistent. Yeah. Uh, AOS coach used a couple, yeah. Um, yeah. and in his cities, and he had great success with them. Same with mm. some a fire slayer player down at Cancon. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Eric in the chat says um, they're a great addition to fire slayers as well. So if you if you already got a fire slayers army, you can yeah put in. Um, he, he mentions actually a gun hauler with some ender riggers alongside. So, yeah, it's a great addition. Um, mm. uh, yeah, and I think a gun hauler as an ally is pretty handy because it can teleport, which a lot of armies can't do. And if you've got some ender riggers hanging off the edge, that's really good. And actually, if you're doing that, get A4 because it's got yep. a gun hauler and some ender riggers. Uh, the perfect amount of ender I guess to put to um, yeah. hang off of it as well. Yeah, and exactly also, seven balloons. It's three hundred and fifty points. So if you don't include the hero, like one fifty for the gun hauler, two fifty, three fifty, yeah, gets in for yeah. one. Yeah, um, and that's another thing you want to figure out when you plan your army is if you have fire slayers and then you get a gun hauler to ally in. Your next logical step will probably be to build a barrack free army. Because you yes. want the fire slayers and stuff. And the same with Cities of Sigma, because you've probably got some dwarfs and stuff like that. Um, yep. But yeah, let's let's move on to the hobby aspect. Because once you've planned your army and you bought it, you've got to build it and paint it. <laughs> Which can yep. be time consuming, um, potentially. Unless you're like Hayden and you can get it done in like how many days? I painted half of a 2,500 like, and something point army in three days. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Three, 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 two years to paint my own pad. <laughs> I spent a lot of that time on the shelf while I was painting other things because I decided I completely I decided I didn't like the paint scheme I've done and then changed it but yeah yeah so um so in regards to hobby uh especially with ko they can be rather daunting um mm. especially if you're a new painter just because they are so detailed um which probably no nah, no you can't come and see them probably but um yeah so just, just like with any army you want to figure out what your primary colors are going to be because you want everything to tie it in you want to figure out what metallics you want to use, if any, if you're fancy, loosey goosey, and want to do non metallic metals and whatnot, you mm-hmm. can do that. Me, I'm too lazy. Um, Vince and Charles are going to hate me for that. Uh, <laughs> now, um, yeah, so you different. So, what I did was that okay, I looked at all my paint, I was like, hey, sweet, what colors contrast with, with each other, and what would look good? Like, um, so what I also did as well is I looked at like sort of like old warships, and I sort of tried to figure out, you know, like what would fit where. Um, I had a look at the models. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I can't talk about it without looking at it. Sweet. So when it came to the ironclad, I had a look at it, and I was like, okay, sweet. So what colors do I want to use? So I came up with this turquoise color as my main because I wanted to try something different. So, okay, sweet. And then I thought, sweet, what colour is going to contrast with that to make it pop a bit, bit, bit more and sort of catch the eye? And so I chose ivory, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and for metallics, you need to think about sort of like if, if you really want to get into the ho- ho- hobby lore aspect. Um, and you look at a lot of the art. So the art, mm. so the art and the base skyport paint schemes are great. So if you look, look at the battle times, they have painting guides. You can look, look, look at all the different sky ports if you want to, but base them on a single one if you're on a moment, a ground like I did. So, yeah, so, and you sort of want to, like, break it up into sections, so so to speak, when you're trying to figure out your paint scheme. That's my opinion, and that, that's my thoughts. Um, another thing as well is that you've got all these little glowy bits. 
don't know if you can see that. There we go. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so with that, you need to think about how's that going to contrast as well. So you're sort of thinking of like three colors, three to four colors really that you're going to be wor- working with primarily. And then from there, you just pick out other things. So yeah, so for mine, I pretty much have gone for very simple. So this brownie turquoise, oh, sorry, sorry, this bluey turquoise, ivory, um, a dark brass, like a ready dark brass, the, this color here, and the s- s- silver, and that's it. And green for the glowy bits, and, that, and that's it. So I try and pick colors for when I'm painting them. Does that make sense, or did I just go on a big rant well, about that? That makes good sense. I think, I mean, there's obviously there's no hard and fast rules here because you, you do what you want to do, and the most important thing is do something that you are going to fall in love with because if you don't and you get sort of disenchanted halfway through a model, then you won't finish it, and or you want to. Like you don't want to have to go back and repaint things, so definitely think things through properly and um, do some tests. Do some test models. I think is really helpful. Um, yes. And, which is another reason why I mentioned it earlier. But if you're just doing it, why I think the under the, under, the underwater wall band is really good because you've got some models you can test paint with. Yeah. Um, and also why it's good to start with a gun roller because if you do a paint scheme you don't like and it's on a gun hauler, it's not as bad as if you do it on an ironclad. Yep, definitely. Yeah. You don't want to make mistakes on this, baby. Definitely yeah. not. Um, give me a second. I'll, sh- I'll I'll give you another example. I'll, sh- I'll show you my oh. stuff. How to, how to paint yeah. how to paint KO in the most simple, easy way you could. <laughs> Just yep. like. Broke painting. Broke painting. Mm. Another thing as well is that KO really responds well to battle damage, verdigree, rusting. Like, mm. I think I personally went a bit over top with mine. Don't know if you can tell or see it. See all the wee scratches I did on it. Yeah. All the dribbles and verdigree and shit. But it is what it is. Well, yeah, and that's a thing, like, Say if you are working to a time scale, you can paint yep. it, and then if you want to go back and, like, if you've got a tournament in a short amount of time, you want to paint it, you can get it painted, and then you can go back and add battle damage later if you want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's what I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's worth expect. bearing in mind, you know, your uh, your time scales and what what you're working towards. I, you you kind of need to have a goal with your army, and like yeah, say, like a list would be a goal, or you know, I want to have a list ready for this tournament, and then what do I need to do to get there? Because if you spend all your time working on your ironclad, and that looks beautiful and it's got amazing battle damage, but then your other models are grey, and when you yeah. have that tournament, it's not so good. Like so, you do what's achievable in the time. And work out what you can, what you can and can't do. The one thing I would say with ships is you can go back to them and paint things, but only certain things. So you can go back yep. and add bow damage to the outside, but you kind of you need to build, you need to do sub assemblies on the ships. You definitely want to do sub assemblies if you. Yep don't you're going to struggle to get to certain areas of the ship to paint yes and then you can't go back once they're put together and do those bits um oh there he is yeah man himself here he is so yeah def- definitely do sub assemblies yep um, here he is right yep put it on screen all right Let's so i'm not a fantastic painter in a, in in any way but just keeping it uh, keeping a super simple color scheme that's cool still make a oh. relatively good looking ironclad so yeah, just it's cool Love the green. black gray oh yeah all right yeah. a little bit of freehand. um 
black, grey, do the rivets and the highlights, they, they took the longest, and silver for pretty much everything else. A little bit of gold to spot out some of the things and the the, the kind of glowy bl glowy color that you get. I think that's from Warmer Communities where you find out where to do it on their um their YouTube channel. They actually have yeah. painting guides for all the um, barracks on that YouTube channel. But Thank yeah, you. Um, you can keep it super simple. It'll still work out. Relatively. Obviously it doesn't look as good as yours, but it works. Um, yeah, and I think if you are doing a simple colour scheme, then picking out things like the rivets and stuff is probably more important than if mm -hmm. you've got a colour scheme with lots of different colours because they become more noticeable and that sort of thing. Um, they do. The other thing is, particularly with ships, is you might want to consider magnetising. Yes, magnetising or, yeah, so that's in regards to the flight stand, right? Uh, well, I was thinking more to do the cannon. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yep. because you, you pay 70 quid for an ironclad and then you want to play it with a different weapon option. You don't want to go and buy another 70 quid ironclad and then uh, yeah. and all that time building and painting another one. I mean, having two ironclads will be cool, but <laughs> it's a lot of work just to use a different weapon. So. Oh, yeah. It's so easy to magnetize that. So to magnetize do, the main cannon. Yeah. Yeah. And don't do Although, it. Although don't do it after you painted it. Do it before you painted it. Do it before you paint it. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Personal opinion: the cannon is better anyway. I don't see why you'd want to magnetize them in the first place. <laughs> Which cannon? The uh, actual main cannon. The main cannon of the ironclad. You want the you want the big great eighth sky cannon. Chuck away that um, volley, volley gun. gun shit. Nah, you I don't like, need it. I like the volley gun, and I think if Seraphon coalesce become more more prevalent in the meta, then uh, the volley cannon will be a better choice. Because my point of damage doesn't affect your volley cannon at all. That's a good point. But it depends mm. on you know, how much Seraphon end up in the matter and if they're using right. terrorist or uh the other one star thingy star right, fine fine magnetize it a little bit just yeah just... Um, <laughs> um, uh hayden the other stand. oh hey hayden mentioned the flight stand yes the flight, the flight stand yay so, what a great thing um, for your yeah, baller, oh so, so, sorry yeah oh yeah for, for your Sorry, uh, for your gun hauler, it's fine. Uh, the model works. You put it on the flight stand. You can. It, it'll stay on. It'll come off. It'll. It'll look like a floating ship. If you go any bigger, yeah. Games Workshop didn't think about that. Mm. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Um, mine, my old Ironclad, my old frigate. They snapped like every event I went to. It was absolutely outrageous. I always had super glue on hand. Um, so what? I did was that a good friend of mine, he um he got a whole bunch of like acrylic rod, this big thick shit, and he cut off a piece and he was like, Yo sweet, you can have this. And it work work works a treat. Um if you've got a Dremel or a drill, you can do that. Um so I would recommend you do that. If you have to use the G dub flying flight stand, what I would do is I would try with your basing, try and put like some buildings or big rocks like touching the ironclad in different places just so it keeps it a bit more steady. That's what I'd do. Um, if you absolutely had to use the old, um, the actual flight stand, because otherwise it's shite. <laughs> Sorry to say. So the frigate barely stays on. Um, yeah. Even that is very front heavy. So it, it will tilt over and start falling off if you, if you just put it. On to the flight stand and trust the trust the the flight stand to do its thing. The ironclad is extremely front heavy, and yeah. will one hundred percent break on you every single time you put it on that. Even if you super glue it. Um, yeah. Just I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you what mine looks like. Oh God. That. That's <laughs> years 
years of breakage and just oh. pinning that joint yep. over and over and re-gluing and break, re-breaking so much to the point that yep. I put a second pin attaching the fin to the base here. So well, that was sorry. fine. But yep. yeah, I, I, I drilled a, a second pin. So this thing is attached to the base on two different spots. Yep. The uh, frigates, you can get away with just having one pin and they should be fine. Mm -hmm. The ironclad really needs something more. Definitely, yeah. It's just that unsteady. Yeah. But, I mean, you can get acrylic rod from places like uh, Green Stuff World or from your local homewares shop, I suppose. I don't know. Um, my, my mate went out and got some from Bunnings down here in New Zealand. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah. But, yeah, um, definitely try alternatives with your uh, sky vessels when it comes to the uh, acrylic bloody brace things no. mm. horrible yeah. but it is what it is sorry games workshop the truth hurts yeah. sometimes that's what you're talking about I just grab mine because I want to yeah show us well, I've never do. seen it actually, like, it's actually gonna you just talk about flight stands and not having issues with it so <laughs> here we go and there's, there a, you go. there's a reason why I am holding so it cool. with one of my other hands um, yeah. <laughs> because the way I did mine was I used a credit rod and I, it goes into the gold ball at the bottom. Um, yep. and I haven't glued it at all because for transport, I thought it would be easier if it comes off the stand, off the base. Yep. It comes That's cool. So it just comes off and it's just push fit. Um, so it doesn't hold up for games? But, yeah. If I turn it over here, um, you can see because this bit here is two bits and it joins in the middle, it's actually Seen, yep. split apart here. And now, even though it was really good when I first did it, it's splitting apart and it doesn't it doesn't hold strong anymore. Um, just go away, especially at the top here. I don't know if you can see that, where it's splitting apart the join. So even though Same, it was yeah. originally a strong plastic world, it's um, it's not so strong anymore. So it was nice and sturdy. It's not so sturdy anymore. Um, yeah. But now what it does is also there you push go. fit and it's it leans forwards, which is what yeah. I was just saying about mm. because it's very front heavy. Um, it is very. And to the point um, where it's touching the, the stand, and that's what's stopping it leaning any further. Um, the only other thing you could do is to drill through it further so it goes right through, and then have a, a longer stand that goes right up into the hole. Or what a lot of people do is they buy a magnet baron stands, don't they? Because, um, uh, yeah, and then you're basically relying on the magnet to hold it. But also, I can show you because I have it magnetized. Turn this in camera angles. So, yeah, if you magnetize it, you can just do this. Voila. Very easy. Very easy. Um, quite cool. And I grabbed my gun haul as well because I done yep. I did the iron guard first. So, it was actually like the first ship I did, which is going completely against the advice that we gave out here. Um, so again, this is push fit. Uh, the fight stands at an angle. The one thing about push fit is you can have this can happen. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, if it, if it, if it, if it hits a, like a slope, it'll just tip on. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, it is, in some ways that means it's less likely to break if you knock it. But the other hand is it's like, if you put it all day, you end up with it sitting like that, which does then look a bit goofy. So you might find yourself <laughs> guessing things. Um, cool. The other thing I, uh, I want to point out while I have this on screen and my, my ship is, I went for what was generally quite a complex colour scheme. Yeah. Like, a lot of different colours on there. Um, That's cool. 
What I found is that I probably went up with too many. Um, too many. And so on some models, I have some colours are more prevalent than others. So my Arcanauts yep. are a lot more bronze than there is on the ships. There yep. is still bronze. Cool. There's still bronze like here and stuff. But what I found is, particularly the metallics, is you don't want to have too many of them on the same model because yep. they end up clashing with each other. So you kind of mm. want... If, for instance, I think two is okay. But if you have like bronze, gold, and silver all next to each other, and then you also have mm. non-metallic colours, you end up with so many different colours going on that it yep. just becomes a bit unworldly, to like, um, a bit awkward to, yeah, to, to sort of yep. make everything sort of sit nicely to each other. Yeah, different. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's really like, know that when, when you're getting into these ships, you are going to have to do some extra hobby uh, on top of the usual Games Workshop build, a mo build and paint a model to get these things to stand up. Yeah. Yeah. To look the way they're meant to look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And then, yeah, and the, there's going to be issues with transporting them as well because they're... Yes. Which is, yeah, so like I said, that's why mine come off the stands, because that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but they are, mm. I mean, at least they haven't got very, like, lots of long, very sp spindly bits, but they're, yeah, they're not the easiest, the easiest thing to transport either. And that's where I think a lot of people would have their breakages, was during yeah. transport. During transport, yeah. Um, Different. So, yeah. Definitely can consider what you're going to do about flight stands. Um, I don't find it is so much of an issue with skyriggers. It's a little bit of an issue. Yeah, it's the thing is, is that with the skyriggers um, plastic things, it's not so bad. But if you drop it, it's going to snip off. It just mm. always does. As in, like I'm not the actual acrylic. The acrylic's actually quite sturdy. Mm. It's just the point where it connects. Even if you've plastic glued it, for some reason this goes ping. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It yeah. just does. Every time I drop a model from the table upward, it always comes off. My Arcanauts, my Thunderers, never had an issue. It's just them. So you could just yeah. throw an Arcanaut against the wall as hard as you can and it will survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, basically. So it's okay, like cool. they're sturdy. They're so yeah. small and like compact. Unless it was like one, so one of the sky pipe might not, but the others I yeah, think sure, okay. Yeah. Or you might get depending if it's sky of a sword, maybe. The sword might. <laughs> um yeah, the sky riggers they, they come off the flight stand. The flight stand never breaks itself though. So you no. can put it back on. Yeah. Um I think the trouble is and I don't know if this is true, but what I've heard is plastic glue doesn't work with acrylic. It doesn't work that well, um, but it can. Excellent. I have done it. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but mine are mostly super glued, just because yeah. it's e easy to, you know, because we and you've got it on pla uh, when you've got it on poly cement, where which is what plastic glue was. It like the guy will start sagging forward. And just like, no, so yeah. you have to hold out or something. So, yes, start a super glue on one, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you want to use super glue for that, and I think that's why they break is because it's yeah. a very brittle bond, yeah. And the other thing I know, noticed for mine is I paint my models off the flight stands for the sky riggers, yes, which I think is great because okay. then you get in between the legs and stuff. But then you are gluing your flight stand to paint. And so yeah. what actually comes off on the off is you have a little layer of paint stuck to the flight stand yeah. and then the model breaks off. So um what I, so, so, so I was gonna say what I do as well, if, if I mistakenly glue the model to the flight stand is that I get some tape mm -hmm. before I paint it and then I wrap it around the acrylic flight stand. 
mm-hmm. right around, right down to the base because the actual flight center on the base is going to get covered up by sand anyway, or mm-hmm. whatever you're using. Yes, yeah, so that's what I do. So I take a put, protects it from the primer, protects it from any pain, and then once you're done, just unwind it and it's all good. So you don't have any trouble then with getting in between the legs with your brush and stuff because if you've got a no. flight, flight stand in the middle, in the way. No. Oh, okay. I, I just get right in there. But that's just me. Um, but I would re- recommend, though, doing it separate from the acrylic rod and the base, just in, you know, just, just in case you do make that mistake. Another thing I've done in the past is I've used old paint pots that are empty and I've, like, glued like so if we glue their feet to the top of it and use that as like a painting handle mm-hmm. or some cork whatever that you can do that i did the same thing except i just used blue tack to hold the models on yeah i've done that too um and it works um it's less strong than soup gluing it but then you yeah you got you can reposition them if you want them what i would normally try and do is if i um, is I put them towards the edge of the old paint pot or whatever it is. So then yep. if you want to get them up in between the legs and stuff, you, you've got an angle where you can do it from where it's a lot easier. Yep. Whereas if they're in the middle of the paint pot, there's no real good angle to get in between the legs from because, you know, you've got the paint pockets in the way. Yep. Um, yeah. What was uh, in terms of fitting out your units, um, something like funders, there's a couple of different ways you can build them. Mm. Um, yeah. There are a lot of options with thunderers. At this point in the book, I would suggest giving each thunderer in, in the box a different weapon. Um, I'd suggest going, going for those special weapons. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it's play for both, and I think it depends on how you want to play positioning your ship. So yeah, and then so I think unless you are happy to just go out and buy loads of models, you want to magnetize some of them. Yeah, magnetizing will help you with this army. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I yeah, I guess. The trouble is, is what I'm what I'm doing at the moment is I'm building them and I'm magnetizing them, but I'm not magnetizing all of them because yeah. you don't need to. Mm. So, for instance, the mortar is rubbish. The only reason you have the mortar is to get the buff. Um, so you yeah. want one of those? Yes. So if you're building a unit of twenty, then you'll magnetize one to go to be a mortar that can be a rifle, and then you'll magnetize say all four Afer cannons. And one deck sweeper, and then depending if you want fumigators or not, because you don't need them for the buff, but they have a different ability, um, which you might want. Which I should probably explain what it is. The fumigator uh, for every enemy, minus one to hit. Yeah, every enemy model within three inches is minus one to hit. Of if they're within three inches of a fumigator, not any few. So if the they never get minus two to hit if they're in range of more than one. Um, which can be fairly useful to make them more survival. And it stacks with the chemist, has the same ability, but with a different name, it stacks. So you might want fumigators as well, but you don't want to necessarily magnetize every single model. You would just magnetize the Afer cannons, one mortar and one deck sweeper, and however many fumigators you want, as opposed to doing four mortars and four deck sweepers. Yeah. Um, with Arconauts, you definitely want to b- put all the special weapons in that box on them. Um, there's no reason to not give them the Sky Pike, the um, Sky the gun. and the Volley Gun. Yeah. Um, for the Endron Riggers, Sky Wardens, uh, at this point, I would build them as Endron Riggers, pretty much all the time um they're just they cost the same amount of points and they are just a little better in combat than the sky wardens are yeah and their pistols as well have more shots 
that yeah, uh, so uh, that, that's the big thing. That their pistols are twelve inch range, as opposed to the sky the the um, sky warden's nine inch. And the reason that that that's such, that three inch is such a huge deal is a lot of our abilities are teleport nine oh, over nine inches away from the enemy. So you um, you'll have your boat. It'll bring out all these sky wardens, and they won't actually be able to shoot. Because they'll be that nine point one millimeter inches away from the enemy, while the sky, while the riggers with their twelve inches will just be able to shoot as as per normal. It's the same problem as the arcanals. Yeah. Um, Another thing um, with the engine riggers, though, um, if you are doing that, is um, have a skyhook in the unit as well. Because I mean, yeah, that's a less saw attack, but then even though you're nine inches out, because you can still charge. Then you then if you shoot it and you hit with it, then you get a plus one to charge. Do you need to hit with it? I think it's just a basic plus one to charge now. It is just plus one to charge, yeah. You don't yeah, you don't need to hit. Oh, yeah, you don't need to hit. Yeah. I'm playing it wrong. Okay, yeah. Well, well 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 there you go. So then effectively you've got you've put it down to an eight inch charge. Yeah. Um but that's the, the, the thing with Ender Riggers and Skullbuns is they have the option of these extra guns. Yep. So you, you could magnetize them if you want to. Um, yep. I, yeah, I mean, I've just built, bought more with them um, because, yeah, because I used to run one unit with guns and one unit with saws um, yep. and then a couple of little small units for you know, running around and being chaff and grabbing objectives and things. Um, so I've just got the models now. But yep. um, if you wanted to, you can magnetize them if you want that extra, um, you know, extra ability to 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 choose what you're going to have. Because you might not say necessarily want them to have all swords and pistols, or you might just might not necessarily want them to have all guns. Um, one thing I would definitely do, though, is if you build one with a skyhook, is I would magnetize the skyhook, not the gun, but the tip. Um, and so then it can also be a drill cannon. Because yep. that's, a ve- that's a very easy uh, thing to magnetize, whereas magnetizing the whole gun is quite difficult. Well, it's not difficult, but mm. if you've never done magnetizing before, it's not as easy as just changing the tip of a weapon. Yeah, but if you want to go the whole hog with magnetize a whole unit of arc uh, enemies, you'll use a lot of magnets, and it'll take a big, yep. quite time consuming. Um, so there's that. Um, and as we said before, you can potentially get them relatively cheap because people are splitting up a war. Yeah, yeah, hmm. very true. Uh, you um, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say like um when it comes to to painting and to, to painting models and such more more on the painting um sub assemblies are your friends yeah um a lot mm. of the things so we talked about a bit with endling riggers um you paint them off their base so you mostly build the model then you paint it then you glue it on I also keep the the top balloon off and paint that separately just so mm. I can get into behind into the um, into the backpack areas and such. Mm. And especially with the boats, there's a lot of things in here that you want to kind of build and then put in because otherwise painting... Hang on. This captain yes. in back here yep. it's going to be almost mm-hmm. impossible. So I usually like this... Balloon is its own sub assembly. This balloon is its own sub assembly. This yeah. is its own thing that comes completely off. This is uh, the, the cannon is in two parts: the the shield and the actual cannon, and all the um, the crew yeah. on top of the ship are completely separate. Yeah. Yep. Also the bombs. Um, yes. Just to get behind and underneath those things. Yeah. Yeah. The more sub assemblies you do, the easier it will be to paint. Um, it really will. The one thing I would say is is do dry fit things first before you glue them when you try to put them together after you paint it because yep. if you mm. mess up with that glue, you will ruin your model. 
Yeah. yeah. I did that with the um with, with the wires off the um off the engine and the front, yeah. front one that goes to the hole. Yeah, I did that. And, did you cut it? Uh, did you cut off the I, spring roll? Did you cut off the spring roll? Or did it just not fit? It just didn't fit. Because what, what so I did I, was I cut it wrong. So yeah. grab grab my shift because it's easier to explain. Um Sorry, if you're listening on the podcast, there's a lot of video on Sean. So, where it joins... Uh, oh, God, I need to get it on. Where it joins here, yeah. like, it comes up here, and then you have, like, a little bit, and then there's another bit that goes off sort of sideways. And yep. on the sprue, that bit that goes off sideways looks like it's part of the sprue. And so you can easily cut that off and file it down, and then when you come to put it together, you'll glue it down here or down here, and then you'll go to glue it in, it doesn't go anywhere. And so I had to use green stuff to make mine fit. Yeah, it's weird, eh? Because it happened to me, so I just had to do random shit on it. Yeah. But so it does, you, does, you, might yeah. Have same, you might have done the same thing to me and cut off a bit that actually is meant to go in there. No, the actual chainy bits broke, so I oh, had oh. to, like, bastardize. Oh, it, it looks ugly up close, but it's all right from the distance. But yeah, the more, generally speaking, with the ships, the more sub assemblies you do, the better. Yep, different. Um, uh, Alex, you mentioned like you leave the balloon off the riggers. Yeah. I put the, I yeah, I've always done them off the base and off the flight stands. So I've always done the base separately. In the past, I used to just do them fully assembled. What I've done more recently is I've um, left the rudder off because the rudder then, right. the rudder gets in the way. It's very easy to glue back on because a lot of it gets hidden. Uh, the bit that drawings in, a lot of it gets hidden once you go in. So you, it's very easy to glue it in without, you know, messing up your paintwork. Yeah. Um, and then that allows you to get to the backpack. Um, and then it also allows you to get under the balloon more because the rudder comes up towards the balloon, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Um, no, that's a good, it's a good point. I've seen some people, if they're doing models with 200 weapons, they actually leave the guns off. Um, yeah. I've Just to get into that. In, in between the gun and the, and the body, really. Um, it's not something I've ever done, but certainly painting... Uh, a guy with a, a saw and a pistol is a lot easier than painting the two-handed guns. Oh, yeah, because, like, you can get into that, like, Yeah, everywhere. it's so easy. Um, with the Arcanauts, it doesn't matter that much. Like, I don't think you can really see, but with the the, the riggers it's, and the funders, it's a little bit harder. Um, yeah. But the, um, the other thing is, when you model your you guys with saws and um, pistols, you you might want to bear that in mind. Like, if you really hate trying to get in front of gaps, is don't have the saw coming across the body or the pistol coming across the face or something. If you yeah. shoot ones where they haven't sort of spread out, it's much easier to paint. Yeah. Um. So, I think we've we've talked about uh, buy, like planning, buying, building, and painting an army. Yep. We've stayed mostly on topic, which is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Yay! So, I think now comes the part where we talk about the pineapple on the pizza. Um, mm -hmm. So, no. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that the new players would need to know are there any questions if, in the chat no they've been um not a question there's some advice is eric said that you can counterweight in the ships to stop them leaning forwards oh so yeah some of them if you, you put yeah. a weight in the back there was something leaning forward. Never heard that one before. just gonna cool. do it um, yeah, definitely a good idea. Um, one thing about the Arcanauts, I would say, which I'd never really considered until recently when someone was asking about magnetizing on Facebook, was 
you could magnetize the hero, not the hero, the, the leader of the unit. And yep. not, not because the two different guns are like, there's there's not enough difference between the two different guns. But I think no, it makes you whatever you want. Because if you want to run a unit of 20 or a unit of 10, you, don't, you can't really have two leaders in there. Um, That's true. Mm. It, fine if you've got a way of... The other thing you can do is, if you are going to do that, is on a couple of your leaders, you can give them, say, like a more interesting base or something. Yep. Um, so you then you can say to your opponent, right, the leader of this unit is the one that's on a big rock or the one that's got like a gold base or something other than the base. Or one could have, I don't know, like a, a different colour helmet or something or a different shoulder pad. Um, yep. If you don't want to magnify yeah. So it's something to bear in mind because if you want the flexibility, say if, you, say if you've got 20, uh, 30 Arconauts, and you want to run a list that has two uh, two units of 10, but you also want to try and a list where you've got one unit of 20, 20, you need some way of knowing which one is the leader. So it's not something I really thought about yeah. in the past, but... Mm. Um, yeah, so building... Uh, so the next thing is playing. And... <sighs> I guess before you can play, you've got to get your models to the place that you're going to play with them at, <laughs> unless you're playing at home. Um, hmm. So, all right. So the first, I mean, the first thing you have to do is you have to find someone to play with. Yes. That requires making friends, and yes. uh, I've got really no funny. idea. Find yeah, a figure out. Chat, chat with random people on Facebook and then start a podcast with them. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's really well. Um, you just won't play any games with them if they if you start a podcast with people that live in different countries. So bear that in mind. Um, but yeah, um, obviously, if you're only ever going to play games in your basement or your garage or your dining room, or whatever, and people are always going to come around yours, it's not too much of an issue. Most people are going to be attending tournaments. Um, if you're new to AOS, you might be like, "Oh, what do I need to do?" And you get some sort of case. If obviously, if you played other armies in the past, you have an idea of what's required. Some people have like cases with magnet trays, yep. um, which is works quite well with the ships um, and the fact that we've got a lot of different size models. Um, mm -hmm. If you're playing something with lots of sky riggers and lots of arcnauts, then a phone case works. Just as well, really, and it's cheaper. Um, I use a phone case, and because I have the ship to come off the stand, that makes it a bit easier to fit in the phone case. Uh, what do you guys use? A case? Yeah. I have um, models. I'm notoriously bad for army transport and army care. Ask anyone in New Zealand and they'll tell you the same. Um, but no, I've started using like a plastic container. Yeah, you know, like a big lunch boxy thing, or just a big Tupperware container, and just ch ch chucking it all in there. It just works for me. Yeah. Um, Did you pad it um, out? Hey, so eh? do you pad it out as well with something? Well, I should. <laughs> no. Nah, so, so, like, there's guys that I play play with. They like, you know, they'll chuck like Glad wrap inside like this Tupperware container, and it sort of sort of like acts like an adhesive, sort of like sticks everything to the. Uh, what's glad wrap? Oh, um, it's like cellophane stuff they used to wrap food in. You know what I mean? Oh, like uh, um, film film. Yeah, yeah, the stretchy stuff that sticks to itself. It, yeah. It's clear. Yeah. You kind of put it over food and did. It... Yeah, clean, yeah, we put cling film in the UK. Ah, okay. Well, you're weird. Well, I think I didn't... strange people from well, the country. Ask, because at first I thought maybe you meant bubble wrap or something, and I was like, well, <laughs> there are. So, well, so, you so, know, they, so they put loads of cling film in, in the case. Yeah, um, no, 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 no. So, so, like, you put it at the base of it, like, on the bottom of it, and when you chuck guys down into it, it sort of sticks to them, so what? they don't fall about when you're moving around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that's what guys in my group do. I haven't done it because I'm lazy, um, and I can't afford a carry case because I'm the hobby hobo. Yeah. So, 
Um, I still use the the old Games Workshop cases. The, um, oh, you mean the big square one, like the big brick one? Yeah, where they yeah where, where they had like little pluck pluck foam, and you could kind of create it into a shape that you wanted, and you can kind of put a model into that. Yeah. Yep. Um, of course, all the pluck the pluck foam stuff's all gone, so it's kind of just a a box with a, a foam floor walls and ceiling and then the boat kind of fits in there and hopefully doesn't bang around too much. Um, yeah. Yep. And then the, the infantry trays were really nice to just put um, your infantry in and you could like take parts from out to make a double infantry uh, square so you put like your uh, ender eggers in there. Yeah, it works all right. Mm. Um, yeah. But yes, mm-hmm. I've heard pe- uh, magnet trays. Like uh, 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 a lot of people I see go to go to tournaments use like um, trays with magnets, and then like a case wrapped around that. I think there's a specific site where they get that from, but I can't for the life of me remember what it Battle is. Phone. Battle foam. Battle foam. Make army specific trays. I've seen them. I haven't seen them up close, but I've seen them online. They've made like actual foam inserts. For like ironclads and frigates and gun haulers and shit like that, it's quite cool. They're expensive though, so I mean, if you are willing to spend the money on it, then go for gold. I've, you know, yeah, but they are. Then, they don't really, I don't know. I haven't really seen much of them. But well, yeah. the other thing is they are modelled around the Games Workshop flight stand as well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm. And and a, and a flat base. So. Yep. If you build your ship slightly differently, um, or and the same, with, then it's not going to fit. So you might yep. have to buy stuff, and if you're going to start collecting, you might as well buy a friend. But yeah, what I did was I bought a uh, tabletop tiring case, yep. uh, and they do like a create your own custom case thing, and it works out cheaper doing that than buying all the bits individually. Uh, oh, yeah. You're still going to end up spending quite a lot of money. I think mine costs eighty pounds, which is more than an ironclad. But then it, I can put my entire army in that. Um, That's cheaper than an ironclad in New Zealand. There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, but, uh, yeah. Tabletop tower it might be expensive in in New Zealand as well. It's um, time to start going to Games Workshop prices in 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 other countries. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got. A uh, big layer of pluck foam, which I then sort of spent some time plucking bits out and cutting it half height and stuff in places to fit the ships. Um, yep. And bought different size trays for different units. So, you know, the Archonauts are in, you know, small infantry ones and the Riggers are in slightly bigger mm-hmm. ones. The Sky Wardens, yep. the Sky Mines are even bigger ones. And yeah. they're different heights and things. It takes a little while to figure out what you need to then make the most of your case. And, you know, obviously then, if you then end up buying different lists, you want to transport different models. Um, so then you might end up buying more trays eventually, which is not necessarily ideal. But, you know, if you want to look after your models, that's kind of what you want to do. Yeah. What can you do? Mm. The other thing I've seen people do is they just buy big storage boxes and wrap stuff in cotton in uh, kitchen paper. Yeah, so kitchen? Like, yeah, just like, yeah, you know, like you buy it on a roll and it's just like absorbent. I mean, it's, it's in high demand right now, so I'm not, I'm not sure what, what your chances are of fun stuff like that. Yeah. But... <laughs> yeah, I mean... Maybe when I'm, it comes back. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily rely on that too much. I used to transport my ship doing that. Yeah, the ironclad fits really well in the malign sorcery box once it's built. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I will get you wrong. Uh, I, that's how I used to transport my ironclad before I got my big cat. <laughs> like, that's some hobby yeah, hoboing. Yeah, I put the base yeah. in the base at the bottom and then just wrap it. And it just sat in there vertically on its own. But it's not ideal, really. Um, yeah, then it's not an easy army to transport. I don't think any models are that easy to transport, other than, I don't know. I mean, if you had a whole, a whole wow. army of just foot troops, then it would be, but... Mm. 120 Archimods, make it a thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, not again. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. 
No. But moving on to playing, um, I mean, it comes oh, to, to your list, really. Mm. Um, and you need to have, I mean, you can prep as much as you want to or as little as you want to. Like some people yeah. will look at, have a plan for every battle plan and for every potential army they might face. Um, whereas, I mean, I don't go to that full extent because... I mean, we, we don't want to make this into a tactics video, no. um, but just like, just, simple, simple tip, don't be too aggressive, stay yeah. back, yeah. wait, mm. shoot, do it slowly, don't yeah. shove everything into their face, turn one, shoot and go, yeah, what are you going to do now? Because what they're going to do is they're going to turn around, punch your ironclad, and everything's just going to... Yeah, blow up in your face. Yeah. But um, everything you want to do is what your opponent wants to do. Hmm. Um, so just bear that in mind. I think the, the most... The, I mean, it depends on your army build, obviously. But the mo because Fly High is so powerful, and because you can teleport, the best thing I would suggest is if you... First of all, if you can make your opponent go first, do. Hmm. And plan assuming your opponent is going to take the first turn because if if they don't and they make you take the first turn because it depends on your number of drops in your army but if you don't have the choice because you've got ships that can teleport you can afford to deploy cautiously and then if they make you take the first turn you can still hit them if you need to so yep. if you've got one ship uh, it depends on then you'll probably deploy in a corner and put a screen around put everything in a corner to screen everything around it with some Arconauts mm. if you've got enough Arconauts and you've not got too much stuff to screen you can maybe deploy in the middle of the table with like a semicircle sort of screen around things but generally mm. I would say if you can say if you're low drop if you get the choice make your opponent go first anyway because you yeah. don't be double turned yeah. Um, I've only got one point in regards to play with KO. Um, and this is more pointed towards new players, um, people just into the army. KO, and this is not to dissuade anyone, because obviously we want more people to play the army. Oh, everyone's got to play the army. 100% KO. Yeah, everyone wants to play KO. Come on. Um, Two years time, everyone playing KO. That's all we want. Oh, God, it'd be awful. <laughs> no, you know, don't That's... play KO. Nah, um, but no, honestly, KO isn't a beginner-friendly army, especially now. Like I'm, like I'm, and it's always been the case. Um, you know, back when they first came out, to when it is now. I mean, they're not very for, for, they're not very forgiving when you fuck up. But if you do what you need to do and you do it in the right order, blah blah blah, blah then then your opponent's really going to fair field on the same table. So just bear that in mind. You will lose a lot of your first games unless you're a gifted wizard with new armies like fucking Sean Tubman. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no. Nah, um, you know, you will lose games. Yeah. Don't let it get to you. As you play, you'll start to figure out your list. You'll start uh, to figure out the army. I mean, fuck, I've only won two games of this army so far. In this new edition, it was a different one. In, in, in the first edition when I was first playing, but... um. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're all challenging army, uh, especially now. I mean, for me, it's been taking me a while to get my head around um, just how the army works now and how different it is. And fuck, I've been playing Age Sigma for, God, four years now. So, you know, yeah. So, yeah, but but be prepared to win, but this is sorry to lose, but when you win, it's fucking rewarding. There you go. That's my only tidbit for playing. Yeah. It depends who you're playing against because and what they're yeah, exactly. <laughs> equally because we can present so much force in one turn and say if you do get a double turn you can quite easily end up tabling your opponents as well. It's very yeah, swing. yeah it is very very, very, very very swingy. But as I said, yeah, just if you do what you need to do, you'll you'll be all right. If you don't, or if your opponent's really good then they'll be able to mitigate what you're up to. But that's for a different show. 
Um, yeah, and because obviously it sounds like you play against a lot of very experienced players. So yeah. just even in your casual games, um, and probably in your casual games, are they playing quite strong lists? Are they? Is it mostly tournament practice or games? Yeah, yeah. My local group is all. Um, it's pretty top end competitive, you know, because I've got the likes of if you know the New Zealand scene, or if you've been to Cancun, you probably know Goon Boss, Seth, um, yeah. Sean Tubman. Um, yeah, so I so play play with a lot of those guys on a very regular basis, and they're all very, you know, yep. Yeah. So pretty much we're always trying the most competitive lists we can, just because we're a tournament based group. Yeah. So, but 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 we do have casual guys in there, and you know, so we try not to play uber heavy lists against oh. them. But that is what it is. Yeah. So I mean, what was my problem is, is like your perspective of like you have, you've only won two games um, with the new book and stuff. Is you're playing against top lists with very experienced players, um, mm. so that might not necessarily be the case for other people. Um, like obviously, yeah. I mean, it depends. It all comes down to what you play against. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, the advice is still very good. Of, you know, don't get downhearted. And this, this is, is not, not. <laughs> this is where like the playing part. I mean, we can't do a, a huge talk a huge amount about it in this episode, but it kind of then feeds back into the planning part. Yeah, it, when you plan your list. You need to think about how you're going to play it, not just, oh, what can these things do? It's like, well, how am I actually physically going to put them on the table? Where am I going to move them to in certain battle plans? How am I going to deploy them? Because if yeah. you haven't thought about that when you've written your list, then you come to put it on the table and like, well, how does this work? Um, and generally, after you've played some games, you might want to rethink some things in your list which will then go back mm. to your start the whole process again of like, well, I played the list and I want to make these two or three changes. And that might mean you've got to go and buy more models and then build them and paint them and stuff again. Um, yep. It's like a, ref a refining process always. Just, I wouldn't necessarily assume that, especially if you're new to the game, that the first army you build and paint and you that you can build and paint 2,000 points exactly, and then you won't change it. Um, yep. Maybe if you net this, if you net this, you might be able to, but that will rely on it, that net less working for your play style and you... Yeah, uh, it's, it's always better to come up with your own kind of style and way of doing things mm -hmm. than yep. finding something on the internet that someone else has made to fit their style, which mm -hmm. might be really good for them, but isn't going to It's always work for you. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, so if you are going to take someone else's list, at the very least, try and figure out how they use it. Because, like, for instance, if you've, if you've watched this show before or listened to this show before and, you, you know, you listen to the ones you understand how Kron's used his CanCon list, then you're, you'll be able to, say, copy that list and use it more effectively than if you just take another random list and you've got no idea how they play it. Because mm. at least you've got some idea of how it plays, um, but yeah, generally you're you're going to have to go through this refining process, mm. either mm. because the list isn't quite right or it doesn't suit your play style somehow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yep. Um, I think yeah. I'm going to have to call it there. Uh, I think we covered we've, everything anyway, haven't well, we? We've pretty much covered everything uh, for like just just starting a new KO army, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of podcasts out at the moment, uh, uh, just going over like in, in specific strategies and specific parts like uh, sky ports and um, list builds. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a good to start out. How to how to build plan build paint how to plan buy build paint yeah yeah yep. that order there you go exactly what we need to do yep perfect um, 
So, yeah, just to, to wrap up, I guess, um, I asked last week, because we, apparently we can do a podcast, you know, twice in two weeks now. <laughs> That's yeah. weekly. We go ages without doing them, and then we do it do, uh, one a week after another. Um, I mentioned about... We're consistent. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mentioned, a couple of people said they are interested. If you are interested... Uh, let's know. I don't know um, if it's definitely going to happen yet. But if you do, if you are interested, in, also let me know where you are. Not not specifically, but you know, it's no good me getting some guys made in the UK if everyone that wants them is in the US or everyone that wants them is Australia. Because we, the fact that we have got like three of us, um, so we can actually get them made in the country where most people want them. That might work better. Um, yep. we'll put yes. know, cast dice. That'd be. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? We might do it. We might not yet. Um, but yeah, if you do, if you do want them, let us know. Um, we're going to do more shows at some point. Um, about not for sure. This building and stuff. Um, so I know we haven't covered that much in this show, but it wasn't really what the show was meant to be about. So no. um, we'll we, get Tubman on. Soon. Soon. Oh, I'm trying, mate. He's a, bu- a busy man. This is, yeah. this is, on, this is on you. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best. I'll give him shit tonight. See, see what he reckons. Yeah. Good. All the shit. But yeah. <laughs> I always do. If you like the video, give it a like, um, subscribe, all that sort of jazz. Don't know. Well, mm. but yeah, thanks for listening and watching if you're on youtube um see you next time yeah Yeah.